Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be installing Debian 11 Bullseye on a storage disk of your choice. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk. We'll boot that disk and finally install it on a empty storage space of your choice. All right, on the Debian.org website, we'll first want to select the download option. You can explore their website, of course, but what we're looking for currently is somewhere to download. I see it right here. So when we hit the download button, a download will start automatically, at least it should. If it doesn't, you can click on this right here. But let's talk about the image here that we're about to download. It says Debian 11 AMD 64 net inst. This means it's the Debian 11 installer for the AMD 64-bit architecture. So make sure you have a 64-bit computer you're installing this on. And then it's the net installer. So you'll have to have an internet connection in order for this install to work. All right, I'm gonna click on that and just save it to my downloads and begin to download. All right, and once the downloads finish, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Etcher app. I'm going down to my search bar and then searching for apps here and typing in Belena. After I launch it here, we'll make sure to flash our image onto a USB, CD, or DVD of your choice. Belena Etcher is an easy to use application available for Linux, Windows, and Mac. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk, such as UNet Bootin or Rufus. The first thing we want to do here in Belena Etcher is select the image that we just got done downloading. I have it here, Debian 11 AMD 64 Net Inst. I'm gonna click on that and hit open. Next, I'll select which drive I want to flash the image onto. I can hit this change button, and by default, any USBs, CDs, or DVDs will be listed in here. I only have the one in my system right now, this verbatim store and go USB device. That's about 32 gigs. I'm going to select this and hit continue. I usually suggest around four gigs for USB, but you can also do less since this image here is only 400 megabytes. Also, one other mention is whatever drive you select, it will delete the contents of whatever's currently on it in order to flash this Debian image onto it. So make sure you have nothing on the device and then you're ready to hit the flash button. You'll be asked for administrative privileges. Go ahead and give that. So then you'll take this USB over to the computer where you want to install Debian on. You'll insert the USB and then you'll go into your BIOS so you can select this newly flashed USB and make it the first thing to boot on your system. This is usually done by finding the correct key to enter in your BIOS. For some people it's F2, others F8, and some delete or escape. Make sure to look it up for your BIOS brand. I'll show you what it kind of looks like on mine. First, I'll exit out of here and move on with the installation. A few moments later. All right, and on my computer, while I'm first booting up, there's a screen that tells me to either hit F2 or delete in order to get to my BIOS. So I'm gonna go ahead and spam that until I get in a BIOS, as you can see here. And if I successfully got into my BIOS, I can see the screen here where it tells me that I have UEFI BIOS up in the left-hand corner. The key to get into your BIOS might be something different, but we're looking for a screen similar to this. Now mine's a newer based UEFI BIOS. And in mine, I can go ahead and select the boot menu by pressing the F8 key. And if I do that, I can see that I have a few options here. Well, the option I'm actually looking for is the UEFI verbatim store and go here for myself because that's the 32 gig USB I used in order to flash my image onto. So I know that's the proper one. Of course, yours might have a different amount of storage space, but instead of actually clicking onto this, I'm going to show you a different way which might look more like your own in order to change the boot order around. I'm going to do the advanced mode in my BIOS, which is F7, and then you might actually see a screen more similar to this one where you have various different tabs at the top. The one we're looking for is something called boot or boot order. This will allow us to change the order around of what devices get booted and in what order. And we're looking for boot option number one to make sure that this is actually selected as the same USB, CD, or DVD that I had just got done flashing. So mine's right here. It's the 32 gigabyte verbatim store and go. I'm gonna select this and now I can see that my boot order option number one is the UEFI USB that I just flashed my Linux image onto. All right, and one other thing I'll make sure is that secure boot and fast boot are disabled on my computer. 
So for mine, I select an OS type, which automatically disables Secure Boot, but you'll wanna make sure to disable this because otherwise your computer may start Windows instead of other operating systems. After all that's done, I'm going to the exit tab where I can go ahead and save my changes and restart the computer so it can restart into the installer of my Linux image. So I'm going to hit save changes and reset, confirm those changes, and let things reboot. One eternity later. All right, and if you did everything successfully, you'll see a screen similar to this, where you can select between the graphical install, regular install, and advanced options. What I want to select is the graphical install method and press enter, and then give it a few moments here. And the first screen we're greeted by is selecting a language. We'll select English and continue. Then it's asking about your location. Put in your location and hit continue. Now we're asked to configure our keyboard, whatever keyboard you're using. Again, select it, mine's American English, and then hit continue. The installer will set up a few additional components here and set up your network. So make sure you have that network connection, either ethernet or wireless, and it will ask you for a wireless username and password. If the network succeeded, then it's time to configure the network. Here you're being asked for a host name. This is what other computers will know your computer as. I'm gonna type in Savvy Nick for mine. You can type in whatever you like for yours and then hit continue. Here we can type in a domain name if your network uses them, but mine doesn't, so I'm going to hit continue. So here's something important to read up on. We have a root user and password that will get set up here. This means you will have a user called root and then they'll have a separate password from the normal user and your normal user will not have root privileges. So if we look up here, it says the root user should not have an empty password. If you leave it empty, the root account will be disabled and the system's initial user account will be given the power to become root using the sudo command. Well, this is what most people typically use across different distributions. So I'm going to leave mine empty. If you want a separate root user, you can put in a password here. I'm going to hit continue. Following that, we're asked for a full name of our new user. I'm gonna name mine Savvy Nick, name yours, whatever you like, and hit continue. Here, we're given a username for our account. The last one was the name, username Savvy Nick. I'm gonna follow the same trend there and hit continue. Now we're asked for a password for that new user. Type in your password and confirm it on the second slide and confirm it on the, on the second field. And as long as they match, hit continue. Now you're ready to configure your clock and choose a time zone. I'm gonna be in Eastern here today and hit continue. And then the installer takes a few moments and we're asked how we want to partition our disks. Since we're new users, we're going to use the guided method with the entire disk. There are different options that you can read up on if you're interested, otherwise hit continue. And now we see all the disks that are available in our system. This is a critical moment where you choose the proper disk that's completely empty, a storage disk that allows you to install Debian on it fresh. So make sure you select the proper disk where you don't have any information or data on that can be erased completely. Select it and you can verify that by looking at how many gigs are available on that disk and seeing what the name of the disk is. I only have the one currently in the computer, so I'm going to select that one disk and hit continue. Now we're talked about a partitioning scheme. Do we want all our files in one partition? It says it's recommended for new users, so I'm going to stick with the first choice and hit continue. Now we're getting close to confirming our partitioned disks and actually applying the changes. It says here, finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Here is what's going to happen to the disk that we're writing over. First, we're going to have a UEFI partition. Next is going to be around 67 gigs, at least for me, a VXT formatted root partition. And then we have number three, which is a gig for swap space and then free space before and after those partitions. That looks good to me. So I'm going to select the finish partitioning option and hit continue. Now here's our final warning. As long as we have the proper disk selected, we can select yes, because now the changes will be written over onto disk and anything and everything on that disk will be deleted. So make sure in fact you double check that you had the proper one selected at the beginning and hit continue. At this point, we're installing the base system as well as all the rest of the packages that are necessary for the system to install properly. This is going to take some time, anywhere between five to 30 minutes, depending on your system's speed. So take a moment to relax while the base system 
in gets installed. All right, and once the base system is installed, we're going to be installing extra packages. And it says, do we have any extra installation media? No, if you did have something extra you needed to install with another media source, like a USB, CD, or DVD, you would insert it now, hit yes, and select that media. Anyways, hitting continue, we'll get some more questions. It says, configure the package manager. Well, we get to choose a mirror country now. I'm in the United States, so that's what I'll choose. Choose the mirror closest to you and hit continue. Following that, you can select a more specific mirror around your area. Look through the mirrors and select whatever you like. I'm going with official dev.debian.org mirror and hitting continue. If you have proxy information, this is where you enter it in. I don't, so I'll leave it blank for none and hit continue. Now the package manager is getting configured and it's going to retrieve some packages real quick, including installing extra software that's needed over the internet. And that's why it's important that you have an internet connection. This can also take a little while depending on your network speed, as well as your computer. We're asked if we want to join the popularity contest. I select no because this is a package usage survey and then I continue shortly after that you'll get this software selection page. This is where you get to select some extra packages that are installed by default with the system and by default we have the Debian desktop environment GNOME is the default desktop environment. If you don't know what a desktop environment is please look it up because this will dictate what the look and feel of your desktop looks like. So there are many different choices here, including XFCE, Mate, LXDE, and LXQt. I just go with the default, which is GNOME here, pre-selected, and then the standard system utilities. If you want a different one, deselect GNOME and select the other one that you want to install. Otherwise, go with GNOME. And if you deselect all of the desktop environments, you will be left with just a Linux console at the very end of everything and no desktop environment. Once you have your selected, hit continue. And now we're retrieving files and getting packages real quick. There's 1360. This again is all dictated by your network speed, including your computer's speed. So this might take a while to get all of these packages down and then installed. Give it a few minutes as it could take anywhere between 10 to 45 minutes or maybe even longer depending on your network speed. Hopefully it doesn't take that long but I'll meet you when this is finished installing all of its packages. All right and when things are finished installing we'll get installation is complete. It's time to boot into your new system but before we do this we'll want to make sure as we're hitting continue we'll probably get a message to remove our installation media. Otherwise, you want to do it when your computer is finally powered down or else you will just boot right back into the installer image and you don't want to do that. Instead, you want to boot into the newly installed system. Also, make sure that you have two things in BIOS disabled. That's secure boot and fast boot or else you may just directly load into another operating system and you'll want to make sure that your storage disk which you just got done installing Debian 11 on is the first in your boot priority. Let's hit continue. All right if you have your installation media removed and things have loaded you should see the GNU grub screen. You might have went past this one automatically because there is an automatic timeout. It doesn't matter. Select the very first option if you haven't already which is Debian GNU Linux and press enter. All right, here is the login screen. I'm going to select my user and type in my password that I created for the user and then press enter. That will log me into the desktop environment. And congratulations if you made it this far, you've successfully installed Debian 11 Bullseye on your computer. I'll show you around real quick. If you go up top, you have activities, which allows you to go through the default applications that are available on the system. If you go down to the very bottom here, we can click on show applications and you get the default applications that are installed. Some of the default applications include Firefox, your default web browser, Evolution, the default mail client, LibreOffice, 
the Office Suite and in GNOME software, which is the software store here. Make sure to check those all out. And if you need help finding something, you can type to search at the very top including display if you wanna change out your display settings. Getting out of here in the middle, we have the current date and time with the calendar and any notifications or events that we have going on. And finally, on the right-hand side, we have information about our current volume and volume control, our wired and wireless connection, quick access to settings, locking the computer, powering off, logging out, or suspending the computer as well here. And that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.